Firing chain is armed. 15. Go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. 40 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. from Capcom Barry Wilmore, a transducer, instrumentation only, no action required. Atlantis now 15 miles in altitude, already 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, one minute, 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis flexing its muscles one final time. Atlantis traveling almost 2,600 miles an hour, 21 miles in altitude, 24 miles downrange, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. Standing by for main engine cutoff. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. For the last time, the space shuttle's main engines have fallen silent as the shuttle slips into the final chapter of a storied 30-year adventure. Now standing by for external tank separation. Houston Station, Atlantis on the big loop, initiating RPM in three, two, one, mark. We copy. Houston copy. With that, uh, Commander Chris Ferguson now will begin the uh, slow three-quarter of a degree per second rotational backflip. This again is about a nine-minute maneuver. You'll hear uh, the start photography call initiated uh, when the orbiter is in the correct orientation of this procedure. The actual R-bar pitch maneuver will last about nine minutes in duration, about 93 seconds of available photography for Sergei Volkov, Mike Fossum, and Satoshi Furukawa. Atlantis on the big loop. Start photos. Start photos. And with that, uh, a period of about 93 seconds of uh, good photography now initiated for uh, Sergey Volkov, Mike Fossum, and Satoshi Furukawa using uh, digital cameras and high powered lenses out of the Zvezda service module. The uh, rendezvous officer uh, indicates to Flight Director Quatziella Barujo that uh, Commander Chris Ferguson has flown a textbook R-bar pitch maneuver. And you can see the structure of the International Space Station now coming into view as both spacecraft uh, pass over the limb of the Earth. Atlantis coming up on the uh, so-called V-bar, the velocity vector. Atlantis Houston on the big loop. The teams have been pulled in concurrence 
You are go for docking. Atlantis on the big loop copy. Go for docking. Houston and station Atlantis on the big loop. We don't see a flyout. We're initiating final approach. Houston copies. Station copies. Pilot Doug Hurley informing uh, both uh, station and shuttle flight control rooms that no flyout is required, meaning no additional alignment required. Commander Chris Ferguson uh, is dead spot on with the two docking mechanisms uh, perfectly aligned. Contact, docking confirmed. Capture confirmed at 10.07 a.m. Central Time. Houston, the station Atlantis, capture confirmed and we see free drift. Station at last, Atlantis, Houston, station free drift is confirmed. Well, we have that flag, and that flag is significant, not only because we brought it up on this flight, but because it also flew on STS-1. This flag represents not just a symbol of our national pride and honor, but in this particular case, it represents a goal. This flag also will be flown prominently here by the forward hatch of No. 2 to be returned to Earth once again by an astronaut that launches on a U.S. vehicle, hopefully in just a few years. Atlantis station, Mike on the big loop. Station is ready for undocking. Atlantis copies. Physical separation, Houston. Houston copies. Undocking confirmed at 1.28 a.m. Central Time. Atlantis weighs anchor from the International Space Station for the last time. Twelve and a half years of shuttle missions to build and service a million pound complex at an end. Atlantis departing the International Space Station for the last time. Thank you for your 12 dock missions to the ISS and for capping off 37 space shuttle missions to construct a orbiting research facility. We'll miss you guys. Godspeed, soft landing, and we'll see you back on Earth in the fall. Hey, thanks, uh, Ron, USOS lead, and uh, to the uh, station commander, Andre Borisenko. Uh, we appreciate your hospitality again. And when a generation accomplishes a great thing, it's got a right to stand back and for just a moment admire and take pride in its work. From our unique vantage point right here, perched above the Earth, we can see the International Space Station is a wonderful accomplishment. It was born at the end of the Cold War. It's enabled many nations to speak one in space. As the ISS now enters the era of utilization, we'll never forget the role the space shuttle played in its creation. Like a proud parent, we anticipate great things to follow from the men and women who build, operate, and live there. From this unique vantage point, we can see a great thing has been accomplished. Farewell, ISS. Make us proud. Lance Houston, everything is looking fantastic. Therefore, you are go for the deorbit burn, and you can maneuver on time. Hey, great news, Bush. Thanks. Uh, go for the deorbit burn, maneuver on time. Now looking over the shoulder of uh, pilot Doug Hurley on the flight deck of Atlantis, this pilot point of view camera. Atlantis soon will be going subsonic. Our first view through infrared cameras at the Kennedy Space Center. Commander Chris Ferguson now flying Atlantis. Piercing the pre-dawn sky as the space shuttle announces its arrival at the launch site with its signature sound of twin sonic booms having gone subsonic for the last time. Hey, field in sight, Houston. Happy Atlantis, field in sight. The pre-flare maneuver executed. Landing gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. Ferguson rotating the nose gear down to the deck. Nose gear touchdown. 
having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other, its place in history secured, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time, its voyage at an end. to congratulate you, Atlantis, as well as the thousands of passionate individuals across this great spacefaring nation who truly empowered this incredible spacecraft, which for three decades has inspired millions around the globe. Job well done, America. Hey, thanks, Butch. Uh, great words. Great words. You know, the space shuttle's changed the way we uh, view the world and it's changed uh, the way we view our universe. It's a lot of emotion today, but one thing's indisputable. America's not going to stop exploring. Thank you, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavor, and our ship Atlantis. Thank you for protecting us and bringing this program to such a fitting end. God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. And the commander is now leaving the crew transport vehicle along with our other astronauts. Being greeted by our NASA Administrator and our Center Director, Bob Cabana. 